Welcome to version 2.5 of Flight Computer One. Designed with advanced rocketry applications in mind, this board features inertial measurement, pressure sensing, power monitoring, outputs for active controls, and more. Engineered to be modular and adaptable, it can cater to various applications requiring active control and high bandwidth data logging. Although room for improvement certainly exists, it represents a significant step forward in my embedded systems knowledge. In this video, I'll walk you through the hardware evolution of Flight Computer One, reviewing all versions created to date, while also explaining the reasoning, results, and problems behind each design. In the last video, I introduced this board for my thrust vector controlled model rocket. It was designed with general requirements to provide active control and real-time telemetry, while also being easy to assemble without the use of advanced soldering tools. I started this design with a breadboard mock-up for proof of concept, then moved to EasyEDA for schematic and circuit board work. I was introduced to this software while watching a great Scott video, and saw it as a great entry point for ECAD work. My design features various components like a microcontroller, inertial measurement unit, pressure sensor, power supply, and more. I chose the Teensy for its Arduino compatibility, great documentation, and supportive community. The IMU and pressure sensor were selected for similar reasons, including my previous experience with them. All sensors connect via ITC for ease of routing and prior familiarity. For the pyro channel, I opted to keep the circuitry simple. It uses a single N-channel MOSFET to fire a pyro charge on the low side. This FET was fixed for its drivability at logic levels and wide availability. The LED and buzzer were selected without very specific requirements in mind. The buzzer is of active type and is driven by a BJT transistor, while the RGB LED is connected to the TNC through current limiting resistors and is controlled using PWM. The power supply can handle input voltages of up to 24 volts DC and buck regulate down to 5 volts with up to 1 amp output current. It was chosen particularly for efficiency and the LDO-like footprint. The main bus voltage is sensed using a voltage divider connected to the Teensy's ADC input. This board also features screw terminal outputs for UART telemetry, additional ITC sensors, active PWM controls, and power. Once I completed component placement and auto routing, huh? I sent my final design off to JLC PCB and Oshpark for manufacturing. After receiving the boards, assembly was quick, straightforward, and uneventful. Version 1 of Flight Computer 1 was effective during the early development of my TVC rocket, until that failed shoot test though. This, combined with poor SIK radio performance, led to the unreliability of my only way to capture data. I attempted to improve the design through the addition of an external SD card, but faced many issues with inconsistent logging, likely due to my special code. Also, the two layer stack up and trace layout were far from optimal. As a follow up to version 1, version 2.0 of Flight Computer 1 primarily aimed to enhance modularity and reduce form factor. Additionally, it includes onboard power monitoring, data acquisition, and logging. I also appointed to learn more about advanced PCB design and assembly. For this design, I started again with a breadboard for proof of concept. This time, I verified the ability to transfer and log data between two microcontrollers. To further my design skills, I transitioned from EasyEDA to Altium. I chose Altium for its enhanced features and industry use. This transition was challenging, but very approachable thanks to resources like Altium Academy, Phil's Lab, and Robert Fairnack. These channels provide excellent insight into ECADs like Altium and PCB design theory. Version 2.0 presents a mezzanine structure with a mainboard and carrier board for adaptability. The mainboard features the STM32F405 and F411 microcontrollers. It handles the primary sensors as well. The carrier board, on the other hand, manages power, secondary sensors, and user interfaceable outputs. The STM32F405 was chosen for its advanced capabilities as demonstrated by other embedded flight software like ArduPilot. It also retains compatibility with the Arduino framework and is supported by STM32 Duino. The F411 was selected as a coprocessor dedicated to data logging. It is connected to the main processor via ITC and to the SD card in flash via SPI. The main board also includes an inertial measurement unit, magnetometer, pressure sensor, LED, and buzzer. 
the STIMU and magnetometer were selected for their hardware stock and driver availability. TEMS 5611 was handpicked particularly for its unique ability to measure very low pressures with good precision and accuracy. The RGB LED was selected for its incredibly small footprint and low forward voltages. It is connected very similarly to that in the last design with current limiting resistors and is also controlled using PWM. The passive buzzer is driven through a BJT. The back of the main board houses both 40-pin I.O. connectors, more decoupling capacitors, and the low dropout regulator for 3.3 volt power. This LDO implementation proved to be very problematic, but more on that later. The carrier board features an ITC voltage and current meter, along with four low side driven pyro channels, each with continuity sensing. The pyro channels utilize N channel MOSFETs like in the last design, but this time selected for their small footprint and logic level drivability. The back of the carrier board houses an SD card slot and switch mode power supply. This switch mode power supply is responsible for the 5 volt line and is configured for a 5 volt, 5 amp output with a max input of 25 volts. Additionally, I used 1 mm pitch JST SH connectors to support ITC, SPI, UART, PWM, and SWD outputs. There are also two USB Type C ports to support communication and DFU mode for both micros. For this board, I used a four layer stack up. Signal and power are shared on the top and bottom layers, while the inner two layers have continuous ground planes. I chose this stack up for easier impedance control and better signal noise immunity. After reviewing the design multiple times and ordering, I was running on hopes and dreams and really wasn't sure if all of this was going to actually work. However, with the saving grace of Flux and university soldering tools, I somehow managed to put the board together. It took a couple weeks of troubleshooting and reflowing to get working though. Version 2.0 of Flight Computer 1 supported two flights of my Level 1 certifying high power rocket. Despite the first flight's motor caddo and my horrible PCB assembly skills, the computer was able to log good data and accurately determine flight states. Unfortunately, the good news ends there, as the LDO regulator routinely experienced shutdowns due to overheating. The only way to prevent this issue was by applying forced air to dissipate the excess heat. This was ultimately caused by poor design choices to power the LDO from the main input power and the lack of thermal vias. My initial thought behind this was to allow for the toggling of the 5 volt line. However, this was never really used. Other minor issues included an unreliable DFU mode, the misplacement of the boot button and SWD ports, along with poor buzzer performance. The black solder mask also made physical trace debugging far more difficult than necessary. Additionally, I later found the coprocessor to be unnecessary, as I was able to write much better firmware with the ability to run all tasks on a single microcontroller. Acting as the most recent iteration of Flight Computer 1, version 2.5 was created to address the issues in the last design, experiment with additional sensors, and to improve my soldering skills. The jump from version 2.0 to 2.5 of Flight Computer 1 was done without breadboarding. The main board utilizes many of the same components found in version 2.0 with the addition of a second pressure sensor, inertial measurement unit, and a high G accelerometer. My reasoning for these extra sensors was to allow for high resolution data at times where one or more sensor axes could sufficiently be read at a lesser range. However, this turned out to not be very practical. The carrier board now houses a larger buzzer, low dropout regulator, and NTC resistor to keep tabs on them LDO temps. I also removed the second USB port, added more capacitance, IO protection resistors, and JST ports for ADC, DAC, and power IO. I chose a purple silkscreen with gold pad finish for an interesting look that can easily be debugged on the trace level. After a thorough design review, I ordered the PCBs through JLC and assembled them using a cheap hot air gun and soldering iron. Lots of flux too, of course. This time around, the assembly process went far smoother and I did not face many issues past the missing oscillator. Version 2.5 of Flight Computer 1 appeared to alleviate all of the issues accumulated in the previous two versions. In fact, it was even able to survive all four flights of my TVC rocket. That said, having spent the most time with this board by far, I've discovered a multitude of other issues. Just after the assembly, I was really disappointed to have issues entering DFU mode. 
though the problem turned out to be the missing external oscillator, which according to AN2606 is needed for DFU mode. During component testing, I discovered that the NTC voltage divider circuit was providing highly inaccurate temperature readings. The issue stemmed from a short between the PA0 pin and VDDA on the F405. Initially unaware of this, I patched the problem by using the external ADC input. However, after identifying and fixing the short, I reverted the patch. I've also been experiencing an odd problem with the main channel current readings when the SMPS exceeds a couple amps of output current. The issue seems to present as a significant drop in main channel current while the SMPS and LDO channels appear normal. I've yet to understand the cause, so please let me know if you have any suggestions. Additionally, I found having multiple IMUs and pressure sensors to be unnecessary. However, it makes for a great dev board with all the extra hardware. Here's a list of some other minor issues I faced over time during testing. Currently in early development, version 3.0 of Flight Computer 1 is underway with my primary goals to optimize sensor connectivity, power handling, form factor, and vibration resistance. I also intend to alleviate all the issues found in version 2.5 and add a few new unique features. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a detailed technical overview, and I really appreciate you sticking around with me till the end. I plan on finishing the software video much sooner than this one, and we'll get on to the new computer design, and of course, flying more rockets. If you want to stay along for the ride, please consider subscribing. Bye for now!